although these are such difficult and confusing times, we have been brought together in ways you wouldn't expect. Like you, every Thursday night at eight, we're out at the front door, joining in the applause for all of those people who are working so hard to keep society running. This regular event was referred to the other day by a, a doctor called Hammond on the BBC's Broadcasting House programme on Radio 4. Let's get that going. Let's have a clap for everyone who's doing their best and following the rules and trying to pleasure themselves in a safe and sustainable way at home. They all deserve a clap. Funny how things change. When I was a student, pleasuring yourself was recommended as a way of not getting the clap. If you want serious conflicts of advice, then just look at the world of the face mask. Medical masks like this one cannot protect against the new coronavirus when used alone. If you do not have these symptoms, you do not have to wear masks because there is no evidence that they protect people who are not sick. The surgical mask consists of material that has a very high ability to filter out uh, small particles such as uh, bacteria and viruses. Uh, if you are healthy, there is not thought to be any additional benefit to wearing a mask yourself um, because the mask is not airtight and does not necessarily prevent um, breathing in of these viral particles, which are very tiny. Here's how you can make your own face covering in a few easy steps. With America's top medic, showing how all kinds of household items can become a mask. It's a massive shift in policy. And you have yourself cloth face cover. We don't recommend them for the general public. In fact, it could have the alternative undesired effect of transmitting these infections more readily to the untrained wearer. Wearing a mask must be consistent. It's not on to wear a mask and then decide to take it off to smoke a cigarette or to eat a meal. It must be worn full time. So there you even have a proponent of face masks who insists that you mustn't even take it off to eat a meal. That might seem like a physical impossibility, but I have been working on a design that could solve the problem. It's the face mask with a drawer. See? So you could continue to wear a mask even whilst eating your dinner. I am not the only one to have a little joke about face masks. These websites are a joke too. They are fake. Many of these sites simply take money and never sell any goods. They claim to be based in Europe, but they're actually in Cameroon. And even if the websites aren't fake, the goods can be. There are counterfeits everywhere. So you can't rely on the web, you can't rely on the goods, and often you can't even rely on the evidence. This graph is often brought out to suggest that wearing face masks made a difference. In South Korea, as in Japan, and in Singapore, cases of COVID-19 were well controlled because they, like the people in Hong Kong, often wear face masks. But this omits a crucial fact. The place that had more cases than anybody else was China. And the Chinese people are the world's leaders for wearing face masks every day in the street. They've worn them, as a matter of course, for decades. They have worn more masks than anybody else. I spoke on this in Chicago in 2009. Our first speaker today is Brian Ford, who is going to be speaking on I was lecturing on diseases and mentioned the face masks in China in my talk. Face masks are a great fun. People wear them because they believe they protect against traffic fumes and also against airborne pathogens. These face masks are not being worn because there's been an outbreak of anything. They're quite commonly worn day to day by people traveling to work. Plenty of people take the wearing of face masks and protective clothing very seriously indeed. On March the 11th, 2020, these photographs were taken at Los Angeles International Airport of Naomi Campbell, who is well known as a person who wears weird protective clothing. These biomasks actually claim to be antiviral. Well, we'll see how reliable that claim might be in a moment. And here's a chap with Stay Safe written clearly the motto of the moment. If you're fully gowned up to resist the onslaught of a virus, then this is how you look. I have to say, if somebody turned up to nurse me looking like that, it would scare the shits out of me. 
Let's look at these hospital staff, fully prepared in different ways for the task of caring for patients whom they know will be highly infectious. In present day terms, these women seem well prepared. Any official or politician or, dare I say it, conventional microbiologist would probably regard these women as in full armour and well prepared for the task that lies ahead. But to me, it tells a very different story. First, those gloves. People love gloves. Shop staff wear them when they serve you cheese or when they slice the meat. Cleaners and cooks wear them. There is a family in America, who I believe once had attachments to our own royal family, who insist that their staff wear these gloves all the time. I wear them when I bring in the shopping or collect the mail. And this person is wearing them too. So where's the problem? Gloves carry germs. Germs adore gloves. Pathogens travel from place to place on them, and the humid environment of the hands trapped inside gives germs the very chance they need to reproduce like never before. To germs, gloves are like a, a package holiday to paradise. Gloves also leak. It depends on their thinness, but 30% of some brands let germs in or out. The idea of wearing gloves is to protect against germs, but the way they're worn has the opposite effect. My use of them is different. I buy fairly thick ones, so they don't leak, and as you may have seen in my earlier video, I put them on when I collect items. The moment they've been handled, the gloves are peeled off and go straight into the bin, and then I wash my hands. The organisms on this woman's face will find a new home on everything she touches, and anything she touched earlier will already be on her face. Her spectacles pose a problem. A visor will stop anything splashing directly into her eyes, but if her spectacles slip down her nose, or they aren't comfortable behind her ears, there is nothing she can do to adjust them. That's just irritating. Then there is the hair question. Hair harbours every kind of particle that floats in the air. She already has a community that derives from where she lives. Shortly she will be carrying countless teeming numbers of every airborne organism or virus from everywhere she goes all day. Similar comments apply to the other woman too. Her visor is more open and it does nothing to stop airborne droplets or aerosols from wafting up and into her nose and eyes. Some viruses, coronaviruses among them, can enter the body through the eyes. The eyes need protection in a contaminated environment like a hospital ward, and this visor does not really provide it. And finally, those masks. In an earlier video, I wasn't very polite about them. They're no bloody good at all. Well, my suggestion that they probably stop only 5% of transmission may not have been fair. It could be a reduction of 8% or, or even 10 But the sense of security these masks provide is largely an illusion. The masks do not fit tight against the skin, and even if they did, they are powerless to hold back viruses suspended as aerosols in the air. Most masks can hold back water droplets, and many can hold back bacteria. The reason they can't hold viruses back is simply a question of size. If you recall my little analogy of the olive as a bacterium and the seed as a virus, it's the size that makes all the difference. A mask may be very good at holding back the bacteria. But when it comes to the viruses, it has no effect at all. Yeah, viruses really are too small for masks. But if you want to wear a face mask, by all means do. At least you can be confident that you're not coughing on others and nobody else is gobbing all over you. But the only way to avoid the virus is to do two things. To stay home and to keep your distance. That way we really can save lives. And bear in mind, the life you save may well be your mum's. Or indeed, it could be yours. <laughs>